Hi and welcome to learntocreategames.com. Today we'll have a look at creating a platform game in 2D. So we look at uh, different uh, properties such as rigid bodies. So again, uh, a bit more on the platformer. So let's get started. So at the start, just to show you a little bit, uh, this is the project that we have created uh, last week. So again, we have a main character named the character Robot Boy, a few green dots that the character can collect. So as you can see again here, as I play the scene, you should be able to move the character using the arrow keys. Again, just to remind you, this character has been added using the 2D assets. So again, we can jump using the space key and collect this uh, object. And again, the camera is actually following the character. So again, the main camera here has a script or camera 2D follow. And which means that because the script is added to the camera, it will actually follow the main character. We also have a script called Detect Collision on the, first ca on the character here. And as we look at the script, there are a few things. So again, we have a score here declared at first, a start function where we set the score to zero. And then whenever we collide with a different object, we're going to name, we're going to check for the name of this object. And if it's green dot, then we'll increase the score by one and also destroy this object. So again, it's very simple. It's uh, collision management. So what we'd like to do right now is to add a few more properties. So again, the idea would be to have one of those dots that will keep rebound on the ground and that the player will need to avoid. So to do so, what we will do is simply to duplicate one of the actual uh, dots available there. So again, I'm going to take one of those green dots. I'm going to select the dot uh, in uh, the hierarchy <coughs> or in the same view. I'm going to rename it, so again I press the Ctrl D or Apple D to duplicate it, and then just rename it, Bouncy Ball. Once this is done, there are a few things I could do. The first thing, I could add what is called a rigid body to this object. It means that we, it will have properties uh, that makes it possible for it to be uh, subject to the laws of gravity. But before that, I will just create um, a, a physics property, a physics material. So again, the physics material will make it bouncy. So again, the friction is zero, the bounciness is one, which means that every time this object will bounce on the ground, this energy will be preserved. So again, I'm going to take this uh, material, physics material, and add it to my object. You can see then uh, it has been added to a collider on the object in the space called material. So once this is done, it won't be enough. What I really need to do is to make sure that it has um, a rigid body, but also what I will do is create a tag for it. And the reason for this is that uh, if the, the the player collide with his object, and uh, if this object has a tag called avoid, then basically we'll just reload the current level. Okay, so again, the, the, the player has to avoid this object. So again, if I play this scene, <coughs> if I play this scene, uh, I will be able to, to move around and to collect my object. But again, this object is not bouncing yet because we haven't added any rigid body. Okay, that's what I'm realizing now. So again, selecting this object as always and go to component. And then uh, whenever we're on component, use a physics 2D rigid body. So again, this component will make it possible for the, this object to be subject of the laws of physics, including gravity. So by default, it will start to bounce, as you can see. And because it has a material that is bouncy, it will actually not only fall, but rebound on or bounce off the ground. Okay, so again, I can, you see, I can actually move my character, my, uh, the ball if I want to, because it's a rigid body. So <clears throat> the next thing I need to do now is to possibly modify my script so that whenever I collide with this object, I should be able to uh, restart the current level. So at this stage, what we have is a script. And in this script, basically, what we will do is just add another condition inside within the on, uh, on collision enter 2D function. So again, I'm going to create another conditional statement testing for the tag of the object that I'm colliding with. So if the tag is avoid, then what I will do is I will restart the current level. So again, we can restart the current level in many different ways. So again, you can do application dot load level, and then you could use something that is called a level loaded, which is basically the current level, but again, or loaded level. But in case, in this case, what I will do, I will simply just remove that, as you will see, and just put zero because in our level right now we only have uh, in our scene, sorry, or in our project, you only have one 
uh, sin. So again, if I put zero, it's going to be the default uh, sin. <clears throat> so again, I don't know them off, off by heart. So again, I'm going to search a little bit for this, the, this particular uh, function. And again, what I should have used there is the scripting reference that should have been actually the first uh, entry point for me. But again, here, um, I'm looking at the console window, and after clicking it after a few seconds, error will be displayed because I'm not using the correct syntax. So again, if I go back to Unity after saving my code, you will see that um, the errors will actually appear now. Before that, if I go to the build settings, you can see that none of the scenes have been added. So again, I'm going to add the current scene. <coughs> Sorry. And again, here we have a message saying that um, uh, the loaded level doesn't exist. So again, I made a small mistake uh, in my scripting. So there are two things I could do. I could either, um, I suppose, check for the syntax or just put zero there. And zero will, care, will save, will actually load uh, the scene in the project, assuming that there is only one uh, scene in this project. <coughs> So back to my script. So again, we should be okay. The script has been saved. <clears throat> We're going to play the scene again. And uh, excuse me for the cough. Um, again, once the scene is played, the object will bounce. And whenever I collide with it with the player, it will restart the level. So again here, <clears throat> collecting object and colliding with the object here. That's it. Okay, so again, we have managed to restart the level if we... Uh, collide with this object. <coughs> so at this stage, something that could be quite nice to do will be to create prefabs with the object we have just created. <coughs> the idea is that with the prefab, you can create an object and use it then as a template. So it can be reused later on. So it's just safe work because if you modify the prefab, all of its instances will be updated automatically. So right now, for instance, the bounty ball is added uh, to different places in the script. <coughs> and again, what I will do is play the scene, and you will see that the different instances, based on the template called bouncy ball, will actually <coughs> have the same behavior. They will bounce off the ground, and if I collide with them, I will have to restart the level. So again here, just to showing, uh, showing off a few skills there, at least one skill, which is running. And again, if I collide with this object here, I will restart the level. So it's working pretty much okay. <clears throat> I could create um, uh, templates or uh, prefabs also with the, the dot that I need to collect. So again, I could just, uh, if I wanted to, select one of them, drag and drop it onto my uh, project window. And that will actually create automatically a new uh, prefab. Now, what I will do now is to create what is called, um, um, I suppose I even forgot the name, what I will create there, sorry, is an object that will actually add a force to the solid. So again, it's called, uh, not a box collider, but uh, as we will see later, this object will actually add a force to any object within its boundaries. Now, when you create this object, <clears throat> you will need to make sure that it, the trigger is set to true and used by effector is set to true as well. And the, the keyword that I was looking for is area effector. So the idea is that this object, whenever another object actually uh, goes through this object or near this object, it will add uh, a force to this object. So in this, in this particular case, we have a force of 90 degrees, so a 45 magnitude, and um, again, it's going to be about 45 de uh, 90 degrees in terms of angle. So you can see that once my object, my, my, uh, my player, uh, goes through this object, it will be prop um, propelled upward uh, because there is a force associated with this object. So again, it's a trigger because <clears throat> we don't really want to collide with it, so it's a trigger. But the idea of a trigger is that whenever you, you go within the boundary uh, defined by the collider of this object, something will happen. And in our case, we will apply a force to the, the object that is actually within the boundary. So I'm going to call this object Boost Up. And again, I'm going to check, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, recreate um, a prefab from that. So at this stage, I've got a prefab that is created, and I can add it to a lot of different places. So again, I'm going to add it to the right-hand side if I want to. And again, as I do so, 
you should be able to see that if I go to the left, for instance, it will boost me up again and again. So I'm going to restart the level. If I go right, for instance, so again, what I will try to do is uh, <clears throat> try to uh, reach the second uh, booster there. So again, I'm going to go down. And again, if I jump on this object, I will be able to be boosted up. So again, it's very handy. It's just to add zones. It could be, for instance, to simulate a fan, for instance, or add the other forces. You can also make sure that the force that is applied to uh, any object within this, <clears throat> uh, this uh, booster, I'm going to call it a booster, uh, can be actually random. So it could be, let's say, 45 plus minus 4, for instance. So again, a nice way to, to add this feature. So that's it guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you want to know more about Unity, please check the website www.learntocreategames.com. See you, bye!